I am so thrilled to introduce the Lieutenant Governor. When we first met uh, in January, I was just saying earlier, I was so worried that we had new elected officials and they had to know who Jane Doe was and I was walking around the office like, they have, we have to get meetings with them. We want to make sure they know who we are and the minute we came in, we were so welcomed by the Lieutenant Governor and her staff and you know, we said we really think there needs to be a governor's council and really within the next week we were talking about that and then it happened and the movement and the momentum has been phenomenal. So I'm not worried about that anymore. I worry about other things now, but not about that. And I feel like we have such a strong partnership and I'm very excited to be an appointed member of the governor's council. I also know that the lieutenant governor has decided to really take these issues on and I was just saying to her earlier that it's like a sucking sponge. You get really interested and committed to thinking about domestic violence and sexual assault in this work and it becomes a passion. And I see how that's happening with you and in part your visits to our member programs across the Commonwealth and I know they're going to continue. So if she hasn't been to your program yet, I know she will have been just the most instructive way to learn about this, to talk to survivors and to talk to staff and the advocates who are on the front lines. And I just commend you for taking that approach to learning about this work, so thank you. We're really thrilled that you could be here this morning. It is my pleasure, huge pleasure to introduce you. Thank you. Morning. This is a really good day. Obviously, you talked about the end of the fiscal year, and we're hoping the state budget's coming soon, and we're waiting by the hour for all of that to conclude. And then, of course, we're heading into a, a weekend where we celebrate our, our nation's birthday, and it's a, it's a good place to be. But while we, while we do this, there are many individuals right in our neighborhoods and communities who are struggling, and that's what brings us here today. I just want to start by saying, a huge and profound thank you to Allstate for partnering with Jane Doe and our members here today to do something that is so impactful in individual lives. And from a government perspective, we can't do it alone. As we talked about our budget, there are only so many dollars that go around and we try very hard to make sure that the dollars get to the people that need help the most. But when we find a, a private partner that really gets the the social need and the idea of being a good corporate neighbor, we're thrilled. So that's why I wanted to be here today. Uh, the governor always says, you know, if you sign, find something that's working, spotlight it and do more of it. Today is an example, I know this was a, an idea that Jane Doe and others had in this room, to find the dollars, even if it's 500 or $1,000, to help, a, in many respects, a woman you know, engage in a skill or a, a, a path to a small business or, you know, a, a project or a program in her life that will transform her focus is really impactful. So we want to thank you for your investment. And there's no doubt that who we hear from today, the survivors that are here today, will stretch every penny of the dollar that they get to really make it work for them. So this is just a, a great day and I'm, I'm just really thrilled to be here. I, I do want to say how proud I am of my Central Mass partners. When I was serving in the legislature, I was elected back in 2000, and I worked closely with the Y here, Linda Cavioli, it's great to see Amarelli part of our uh, advisory council as well, doing great things then and continuing to do great things. So. This, this, this partnership uh, is great, and I am very uh, pleased that Governor Baker recognizes the importance of the work that you're doing, and that's why he asked me to chair the advisory council uh, in the form of an executive order that was recently uh, you know, put into motion, and that we have re-staffed and repurposed our advisory council with sort of an injection of some new energy and really building on the success that's already happening out there. So I said to myself, how am I going to really understand, you know, really to take a snapshot of where we are in terms of helping women, helping survivors, helping families and men as well that are victims of abuse. And the best way I could do this is come to visit you. And I want to thank the members that are in this room for having me in our private meetings where you have shared uh, the stories 
you know, firsthand from survivors, how they connected to you. And I think that's the miracle. That's the part. When a survivor is able to find you, that's when they can get on that path to success in life. And so it's just an, an incredible uh, experience for me personally to see what you're doing and to see how much more we still need to do. So I wanna thank you for that. The advisory council is, is well-staffed ge geography-wise, so we have representation all over our state, and our cabinet secretaries, Health and Human Services and Mary Lou Sutters and Dan Bennett in Public Safety are both high-level cabinet secretaries and are engaged in this advisory council. It's just not a law enforcement issue. Although Dan Bennett's prosecutorial experience in the Worcester County DA's office is very important to us so that we make sure that the batter is stopped and the victim gets the services that she he needs in the court process. At the same time, this is a health issue. That's why Mary Lou Sutter's social worker background is on this, this advisory council as well because she knows it's a health issues, issue and there should be no wrong door for a victim when they need uh, help to come to our government, whether it's through public safety or through health and human services, to get what she needs to physically be safe and then to be well. So we're really excited to have that level of commitment uh, through our advisory council, working in partnership with all of you. I, I do want to say that the first order of business for the advisory council is a bit tedious, but it's very important. And that is relative to chapter 260, which was passed in in the wake of the very public now recognized matter involving uh, uh, Mr. Remy and how that law uh, really is focused on training across the board. So what we're finding is that although the law is less than a year old, we need to make sure that there is consistent and deep training across the board from health perspective to law enforcement to the advocacy world. So we're working very diligently on that. And, you know, I think that there is a lot of cross intersections with homelessness and making sure that when a, a victim is seeking a safe place to live, that we also assess what she needs. Oftentimes it's a physical safe place, but that means leaving a place where she has a, a tie and it puts her in a place of homelessness. So really tackling the homelessness issue, uh, physical safety, and then the third component is really that financial security. Because as we are all focused on making sure that the victim and her family finds a safe place to be and wrap around the services early on to make her well, we need to make sure that she is empowered with the skills financially to be independent, to be self-sufficient, so that she doesn't go back. So that's why what Allstate is saying about that financial uh, inter interconnection is really important and we will be focusing on, on that as well. So I just wanna say a thank you for what you're doing. I mean, it is just hugely impactful that the dollars that you are generating today go directly to help a survivor. And the programs are great from Zumba classes to yoga instructors to starting a, a new business, uh, you know, a food business. I think, I think it's so great. So I'm very proud of you. Uh, those that are benefiting from this program as recipients for staying with it because the, the challenge is great and hard and I'm sure there are days where you say, how am I ever going to do this? And somehow you do it. You know, you're a mom, you want a better life for your children and you have everything it takes because you've got a lot of people that care about getting it right for you. I do want to touch upon just two recent announcements that we made because they do come into play, especially in the advocacy world. Last week we announced the recommendations from our opiate task force. We know that opiate addiction knows no boundaries and impacts every neighborhood in our commonwealth. And we are focused together with you as our partners to reduce the amount of addiction from opiates as well as overdoses and deaths. When we exceeded 1,000 deaths in 2014, we know that we have an emergency in our state and we together will reduce the amount of addiction. The next is yesterday, I just announced that relative to postpartum depression, which is a, a significant issue, obviously, for uh, mothers, 
And we, through MassHealth, will reimburse providers for postpartum depression screening, which we feel will be very impactful to helping young, young mothers receive the services they need if they are in this, uh, with this diagnosis so they can be well and whole and have the full <coughs> and rich experience of motherhood from the very beginning. So with that, I wanna say thank you. This is a wonderful day. I'm happy to spotlight it, and let's just keep doing more. <laughs>